those of you who are from there um, know that, of course, uh, I'm just an outsider. Um, I visited both sides of the border uh, on a number of occasions for about 10 years, um, but I don't know it like you know it. And so, um, if you enjoy catching mistakes, I hope there are a lot of them. And if you don't, I hope there are none. Um, I'm going to read you uh, a couple of uh, oral histories, I guess you could call them. This first one is called um, what a cold, starry night used to be like. It was just such a wonderful thing that happened to me, said Alice Woodside. Our little house was out in the middle of the fields, and my eye was accustomed to distant horizons. One morning, very early, my father came and woke me up. I think I was maybe five years old. He took me to the north end of the field, where you can see west forever. For miles, I could see wooden towns, old towns, old houses, in a kind of pinkish peach atmosphere. I said, those houses have never been there before. Where have they come from? And then as the sun came up, they began to dissipate very slowly. And then my father explained to me that it was the mirage to end all mirages. It could have come in all the way from some faraway Colorado mining town. He had a bad heart. I think he was pretty much aware that he was going to die. I called him on a Saturday. I think it was in 1989. I said, Dad, I keep forgetting to ask you, did I really see that? He said, yes. He also said, you know, Alice, once I had to go out at night and flood the fields because there was going to be frost. And I saw a rainbow around the moon. That was what he said. And he died that night. I can never talk about it without getting choked up. You just can never believe what a cold, starry night used to be like. They used to be blazing, those stars. Even up at Lake Tahoe, you don't see that blaze. Everything's filmed over. This next one is called The Days of Lupe Vasquez. When I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like getting up. It's too cold and I'm tired from the day before, and the first thing that comes into my head is, it's going to be a long day. If there's ice, I'm not going to get paid for that time. It sucks. At least I'll get paid something. Most of those places pay every day. When you take a sandwich, they say, don't get up, honey, I'll buy a torta. They make fun of you. They say, don't get up, honey, when you break out a sandwich. They know damn well your wife's not going to get up. Why should she get up at 3.30 in the morning? And the sex. There's no sex. They make fun of it. They say, turn your back on your wife. Eat, shower, nada. I don't worry about it because Sancho does it. She's in Sancho's hands. That's what they say. You might as well laugh and make fun. Day goes easier. At 3.30, I get up, drink coffee, get dressed, sometimes eat breakfast. I'll drink a beer in the morning, one or two. There's always this guy selling beer at Donut Avenue at a dollar a beer. He has slanted eyes, but he's a Mexican. They call him Chino. He's been caught, but he just sells his beer and goes on home. He's a smart old man. From my colonia, it's a 20-minute walk to where I catch the taxi and another 10-minute walk when I get in here in Calexico at 4.30. The first thing I try to do is get myself in a good crew where they're going to pay me. I decide on what kind of work I want to do. I pick the easiest, and for me the easiest is broccoli because I don't want to crouch. 
Some people say that lettuce is easier, but you crouch and get wet. With broccoli, you get wet, you get cold, but once the sun is out, you warm up. On Donut Avenue, some guy's yelling, broccoli, broccoli, I'll pay you every day. This guy is hustling for the foreman. I watch for that guy. If you work for a crew for 10 straight days, most of the guys will be the same. Well, maybe not most, but some. I'll know their faces. A lot of times the word will be passed, don't work for that asshole, he yells too much. Sometimes there will be a bus that will take you over there, and sometimes there will be vehicles that will charge you two or three dollars for a ride. So I prefer the bus. You never see the border patrol. When you get to the field and the ice hasn't melted, you can wait inside, but a lot of people make bonfires. You can play cards, joke around. Some might smoke their joint, shoot their heroin. A lot of the girls are used to dick tease the guys, but most guys never get some. The guys really think they're going to get some. It used to be the foreman years ago used to get pussy. If you don't give me some, you won't get no work tomorrow. But even now, some of them just get to take it easy. Just write down the employees' names and jobs in exchange for giving pussy. For the guys, what they do doesn't matter. For the other women, some of them get jealous. I never even try. I mean, women, it doesn't matter what race and what creed. They all have the same spirit of vengeance against you. Most of the time, the ice will disappear by about 9.30. But sometimes there's that black ice and you wait until noon. You don't get paid for that time. That's just another way they rob us. We work till dark. I've worked places where they shine lights on the field so we can keep working at night. When there's no ice, you start working as soon as you can see. The foreman says, muchachitos, little kids, let's go. Or, come on ladies. Just like the way they talk to us in the military. Then everybody gets their tool, a hoe or knife or whatever. And then I'm feeling terrible, horrible, like you don't want to start. It's worse when you're on your last couple of hours. The last hour is always the worst. The foreman understands that everyone's tired. Most of the time, he won't say nothing, because by then the job's almost done. A few will grab a hoe and help you out for a little while. For an eight-hour job, it's 45 bucks. When I first started in the early 70s, I used to make about $17 a day. Um, two up, 250 an hour times eight hours is what? With taxes, you take home about 17, 18 bucks. I'd say the work's the same now. It's the same. Maybe the foremen don't hurry you up and treat you as bad as they used to. We were scared, you know. We had to hurry up. For the foreman, money is more important to them than their own people. They gotta kiss ass, and the way they do that is by making us work harder. They usually let us off where the railroad is, right back by that seafood place on Imperial Avenue, I think on 2nd Street. A lot of times, after work, you drink a beer with two or three work buddies. Not friends, not buddies, just work buddies. I'm in the mood to go home right away. Once in a while I'll do it, but when I was younger and single I used to party all night, screw whores all night and come to work broke. In January it's broccoli, lettuce, asparagus and cauliflower. In February it's the same, and then also carrots in February, March, April. I never done carrots. In March, it's all lettuce, just lettuce left and a few broccoli. It'll end by the end of this month. In April, there's hardly anything. May's onions, lots of onions. Everyone's talking onions. They pay you piecework, 60, 70 cents a sack. It takes me about three minutes, three minutes a sack. And they pay on how fast you talk. 